Welcome back everybody. This is the first in a new series of videos I'll be doing on uh, some model product reviews. Um, I won't be doing all the products I get in my what's on my desk monthly update videos. I do go over all the new products that I received. Uh, whereas this uh, segment I'm going to do select reviews on some kits um, that I deem are worthy. Uh, ones that are either incredibly good or incredibly bad or ones that are just interesting and harder to find. Uh, so the first one of this is actually a new kit I just received. Um, it is the Atalari 148 scale a Hurricane Mark 1 and it is a fully new tooled kit. Um, I believe it came out in 2011. Yeah, 2011 is when this was released. So I mean it's only a nine year old kit so in the grand scheme of modeling ages it's relatively new to the market. I have built their uh, Sea Hurricane um, which is effectively the same kit with just a few extra parts to make the Sea Hurricane. Um, I guess in reality it's only just the uh, the tail hook um, that comes at the back with a different set of decals. Uh, so this one has a few different parts in it, uh, but at the end of the day it is the same kit as that. Uh, down in the uh, description of this I will include a link as well as right now, I believe in this corner, um, I will have a quick link right now to the time-lapse build of that Sea Hurricane. So if you guys do want to get a feel for how this kit goes together, you can take a look at that time-lapse. Uh, so first of all, the box, it's one of the standard Atalari uh, top uh, boxes, opening from the top um, on the back. So it includes uh, this, obviously this scheme on the front is in the kit, um, LEA from uh, Willie McKnight's aircraft from 242 Squadron. And on the back, it also includes um, all the different schemes in a full color uh, display as well as the uh, photo etch and the decals that are included in the kit. So you do get a good easy representation right from the box with what's included in the kit, which is a wonderful addition. I love the fact that Atalari has been doing this with the boxes. There's no um, wondering what schemes are included, what the decal sheet looks like, did they get it right, did they get it wrong. Everything's right here. You can tell from the get-go what you're getting. Um, now the, it, it does say uh, photographic reference manual. Uh, this was a used kit that I bought off of Facebook and the reference manual was not included. So I can't actually tell you um, what it looks like. So I'll set the instructions, the decals aside. We'll take a quick look at some of the plastic. Um, so the pl I'll zoom in here for a bit so you guys can get a good look. So the plastic itself is actually uh, really nicely done. You can see there's some really fine detail going on. The engraved panel lines are nice. Um, they're not overly deep, uh, they're just wide enough to pick up uh, some black wash. Uh, the rivet detail uh, for what it is is beautiful. It's not overly done, it's also not uh, so small that it disappears. So the um, rivet detail is nice. So you get um, uh, two different sets of gear doors. So the, the kit, uh, I'll go, when I go through the instructions later, you'll see the uh, you have the option of building this with the gear up and gear down. So you get two different sets of gear doors, one for the gear up and one for the gear down as it, it does uh, change the shape. The gear doors um, overlap a little bit. So you do get the two options for that. Um, you also get two different spinners, prop spinners. Um, there's a later pointier one and the earlier more uh, domed one um, from the different versions. So you also get uh, those two different options included. Um, control surfaces are all separate and they do build up to a nice scale look. Uh, there's some really nice uh, fabric effecting going on and you're also able to glue it in uh, multiple uh, poses. So again, if you do take a look at that um, Sea Hurricane that I built, um, again, link is in the description. Uh, you'll see I actually posed it with a bunch of the control services deflected in an in-flight pose. So it gives you the ability to do stuff like that if you want to. Uh, the flaps are molded in the up position. Uh, would have been nice to have that as an option, but I mean, you can't have everything in a kit. So of all things considered, I'm not too upset about that, uh, but as I said, it would have been nice uh, to have that as an option. Uh, gear bay, uh, the Hurricane gear bay is pretty sparse and bare to begin with, so uh, it is nicely molded though, the panels and access panels inside are nice. No complaints there. Uh, fuselage comes in two halves. Uh, again, the, the fabric detailing on the rear fuselage, uh, very nice as well as all of the uh, Zeus fasteners that hold all of the panels around the fuselage, everything is molded. It's a nice scale effect. I mean, it's it's not 100% accurate as no scale model is 100% accurate, but it looks the part for the size. 
So the other large sprue uh, includes a lot of the interior parts. So you've got cockpit floor, uh, rear bulkhead, control stick, rudder pedals, your landing gear, seat instrument panel, uh, the radiator front and back faces, tail wheel, your uh, radiator tub housing. Uh, it also includes a full engine. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, your side walls for the cockpit are nicely detailed. There's some nice uh, detail going on on the inside the panels. Um, and they are separate pieces, so you are able to paint them in the proper order to get the different shades inside the cockpit. Um, the instrument panel itself, the piece of plastic is bare plastic. Um, it gives you uh, two decal options, either a solid option, uh, a black decal with the instrument faces, or you have the option of photo etch. So you then put a decal on the, a different decal, which I'll show you in a bit, on the instrument panel, and the photo etch goes over top so you can see the instrument faces through it. Uh, turned out really nice. I did do that on the other one, on the Sea Hurricane. Turned out beautifully. Um, the little door, the escape door for the cockpit, again, some beautifully molded detailing on the inside of that. So, I mean, it's not a Tamiya-type level of quality. It's a little less expensive, a little less detailing. Uh, but, you, I mean, you, you definitely get more than what you would pay for on a, for this kit. Um, you can also see uh, the ends here is where the fuselage would have been mounted, so don't... Um, you know, don't, uh, there's nothing missing per se, that's just what the fuselages were. But you can see here where there was a different sprue gate uh, to give you the other side of the, for uh, different, for the cannon arm version. So it was able to get multiple versions in the same kit. Again, here, uh, this one has the standard one, uh, and you would be able to basically see on the Sea Hurricane version, it was mounted beside. So it, it, it was easy for them to do multiple versions on the same tooling. Um, on to the engine. I'm not a fan of this engine. I don't know how this one is going to build up. The one I did for the Sea Hurricane, the engine turned out looking like absolute garbage. And I don't know whether I did something wrong on the assembly or if it is just that bad. It looks beautiful, but when you get the two halves together, the fit is atrocious, especially when you put the back plate on the front plate trying to get the engine mounts and the firewall all mounted square. It just did not want to line up properly. And I'm a little annoyed because the exhaust stacks have to mount to the engine. There's no way of putting the exhaust stacks on the model if the engine is not mounted. So you have to put the mount engine together, get everything lined up, put it on to mount the exhaust stacks. And again, if you watch the Sea Hurricane build, my engine came out crooked, it didn't fit right, the exhaust didn't quite fit right, it just didn't turn out the way I liked it. The other side of that is the fact that the forward fuselage comes with these panels already removed to expose the engine. But with the engine being so bad, at least on the other kit, we'll see if this one turns out better, trying to fit these onto the fuselage in a closed position ends up looking horrible. So I'm hoping it goes a bit better on this one. If the engine turns out decent, I'll display this with the engine open. If not, it will be built with the engine closed. Uh, so those are the two larger sprues. You also get these two smaller sprues, which are effectively uh, copies of each other. Um, you have half of a rudder, the elevators, propellers, um, landing gear. Um, this one's interesting, actually. I think it gives you two extra props because there are two types of props. There's a de Havilland prop and a rotal prop. So you get each type of blade. So you get four blades in total, but you only need three but that's because there's two and two and four and you get an extra blade. It's just the way they allow the tooling to go together. Um, the wheels have a uh, flattened spot, a weight on wheels look. Um, so if you put it with gear down, you can have the flat spot on the ground. If you put it with gear up, you can just hide that behind the gear door and the wheel looks normal. Um, all in all, again, you get two different options for your wheel hubs. Uh, nothing special on here, but it is nice that, uh, again, you can see how they managed to just basically copy one sprue and it allowed them to do quicker tooling and quicker modeling. So you get a few extra parts for when you needed only one or three, any odd numbered parts, um, but with the double screwed, um, just allowed them to reduce their costs a little bit, which at the end of the day is a good thing. Clear sprue, I'm not gonna take it out of the baggie yet because I don't want it to get ruined. Uh, but again, having built it on the Sea Hurricane, um, the clear sprues, the clear parts come down very nice. Um, it's a very shallow, um, step between the clear and the framing of the cockpit and the framing also has a slight texture to it so that it does tend to grab and hold paint a little bit better than a strict uh, like polished plastic. Uh, you also get your, your land, uh, uh, covers for your landing lights, a couple of other things, wingtip lights, uh, your gun sight, 
the, the um, uh, fuselage light. You also, it's a little harder to see. I'll zoom in a bit, see if we can get a good shot of it through the plastic bag. You have, come on, focus, the landing lights themselves, the actual lights. You can probably just make out the, the, the design on there. So the actual landing lights were a wire frame um, in front of the light. And you actually have that wire frame molded in place on that light, a slight spiral wire. So you can actually see that painted black once you get the little light done up. So it's really nice. I did it with the Sea Hurricane. I painted a chrome on the back. You get a good shot right there, those spirals. Painted the chrome on the back and then the black on the front. When you put it all together, it looks just like a hurricane uh, landing light. So again, a small touch that a tallery put through, and it turns out really, really nice on the finished product. So the instructions of the typical Tamiya uh, instruct sheets, they are just slightly different from a standard eight and a half by 11 page. It's probably one of those European sizes um, where they have American paper and European paper are slightly different standards and I have a distinct feeling that an open sheet this is one of the standard European size sheets so when they fold it in half it just doesn't quite look right to somebody in North America but all almost all of Italian sheets these days come in this size so I'm assuming it's a standard standard page so first page is your usual multi-language a little write-up blurb about the aircraft you're building uh, you get your standard um, beginning uh, sprue layout showing you all the different parts that are included in the kit. Uh, instructions are nice and clear, well numbered, paint guides are on here. Uh, shows you the proper bending technique for your photo etch for the, uh, the, the, the seat belts that are included in the kit. Uh, you can also see here in the bottom corner it shows you the difference between doing the uh, decal instrument face versus just the decal instruments along with the photo etch. So it does give you and show you the different uh, steps you need to do to make that look right. And you move on, you've got the rest of the cockpit, you've got your engine building. Like I said, this is the this right here was the bane of my existence the last time I built it. Uh, moving on to fuselage assembly, wing assembly. Um, uh, obviously, I, I always do it in a slightly different uh, order. I don't put the clear pieces on this early. I'll put them on a little later in the build. Just moving on to that. Uh, uh, and then you've got the lower fuselage and your radiator housing going together. And then over here, you've got some of the landing gear detailing going on in the bays, moving on to the actual main landing gear. So you have one option for landing gear down, and it even shows you the proper angle and positioning of the gear. And then another set for if you want to do the gear retracted, so it can show you the two different ways of doing what you need to do in order to make it with the gear up. So that is nice that they give you the option. Uh, moving right along, you've got the cowlings and some of the antennas and lights and elevators again. You'll learn over time you might break some of the um, uh, steps up and do them in a slightly different order. So he also gives you the alternative for not putting the cowlings on. So it gives you the uh, paint callouts and whatnot. I mean, it's really just not putting the cowlings on. It's not a big deal. Um, step 14, you've got your canopy. So you have canopy closed or canopy... Actually, this is canopy open. Uh, 15 is canopy closed, so it gives you the two different options and shows you the different ways of doing it. They do include the handles, uh, two inside, two outside handles on the canopy. I don't think I put them on when I did the Sea Hurricane. They're just really super fiddly, uh, but it is nice that they include them as an option. And then last step, 16, is your um, props. Again, two different types of props depending on what version, your earlier snub prop and your later pointed prop or spinner. So moving on to the decal options, uh, first one is the box art version. Um, it is uh, P2961 uh, LEA from 242 Squadron, flown by Flight Officer Willie McKnight from December of 1940. I like this scheme for a number of reasons. One, it's got the uh, uh, skeleton with the sickle on both sides of the fuselage and of the cockpit, as well as a boot kicking Hitler's ass on the nose. So that's always cool when you get some, you know, some decent nose art. It's also flown by a Canadian, which is dear to my heart, and even more dear to my heart, uh, Vintage Wings of Canada is currently restoring a Mark 12 Hurricane that will be painted in these exact markings. So it's always nice to have sort of the historic version of it. I have uh, two others over there. I have one painted up as the Vintage Wings uh, P-51 Mustang, and I have a Spitfire that's painted up in the original World War II markings of Vintage Wings' old Spitfire that has been sold since I built the model. So it always it's nice to have those connections, especially with something an organization so close to my heart. So version B is uh, V7437, 
uh, RAF Squadron 151, which is the American Eagle Squadron. So these were the American pilots who joined the RAF before 1941, before the Americans entered the war and flew in the RAF. This was from October of 1940, flown by uh, Pilot Officer J. Haviland. Um, so DZR is the squadron code. Uh, it's a standard um, uh, green and earth over sky. Um, pretty standard hurricane markings, nothing too, too special on that one. I should have mentioned back here for version A, Willie McKnight's aircraft. Also interesting because it's got the duck egg green, which is a very, not a lot of aircraft are painted in the RAF duck egg green. So that is, and it's got the black wing, the flat black ID wing. And this only existed for a small window of a couple of months during 1940. So that's always interesting to have. Uh, version C, RAF 605 squadron, um, from squadron leader Ashmore McKellar. From November of 1940. Uh, squadron code is UPM. Uh, it's got a bit of a crest under the nose and this is uh, dark earth and dark green over the sky color which is also the uh, duck egg blue color. A version DRAF 303 Polish squadron flown by flight officer Ubanovich, Ubanovich from September of 1940. I hope I pronounced that right. Ubanovich. Um, RFE. This has the Polish logo under the cockpit. The famous Polish uh, shield logo. Um, I'll show you the decals in a minute. And this is the dark earth and dark green over sky um, color. So it's again, a standard hurricane. Um, the uh, last, one of the last here version E, second to last scheme is from uh, RAF 69 squadron based in Malta in 1941. And it would have been coming from the factory in the middle stone and dark earth. So like the, the, the brown and tan over azure blue scheme, the desert RAF scheme. However, being in Malta in the Mediterranean, the entire fuselage and wing top was all painted in azure blue. So the whole aircraft is azure blue other than the fin and rudder, which kept the dark earth and middle stone. So it's an interesting scheme. I've never seen uh, that scheme before. Um, so it's interesting to see it's different. If I hadn't had the Canadian markings on this, I probably would have done that one just because it's different, but it looks great. And the last scheme included is from the Irish Air Corps, First Fighter Squadron, Shannon Air Force Base, Ireland, 1943. Uh, so it was on its own Air Force. The Irish Air Force was separate from the RAF at the time, and it was painted up in, it's a standard uh, dark earth, dark green over sky type S. The uh, standard sky color, however, it does have the Irish marking. So you'll see in a second with the decals, uh, it's got the Irish roundels on the fuselage and on the uh, wings. And then underneath the wings are a green, white, and orange stripe. It's a really interesting scheme. Again, it's different if I had multiples of this, and this would be something that I would look towards doing. On to the decals. Uh, the decals are beautiful, printed by Cartograph. Lots and lots of small details. Um, the instrument faces look amazing. I'll zoom in here a little bit so you guys can get a good look at it. So the instrument faces, you can clearly see all the detail on the instrument faces. They look great. So you can see this is if you're using just decal and this is the one you use if you're using the photo etch. Uh, for the propellers, beautiful uh, rotal detailing. All the rotal props would have had this style logo painted on them. So lots of cool detail on that. It's very easy to make out what's going on. Um, moving on to some of the crests. Uh, you can see some of the crests. There's lots of details in here. Um, the Polish crest looks beautiful. Uh, the only thing I'm a little annoyed about is the Hitler caricature is very unlike Hitler. Um, there's quite a bit missing on it. I don't know if that is fidelity of the printer that was unable to get it. I feel like they could because some of these other decals have quite a bit of detail in them, including, for example, this guy here. This is, just seems kind of planned. I have a feeling this might be trying to work around some of the European laws against Nazism. A lot of the decal sheets will not have swastikas. They're either not included or you have to piece them together so that way there isn't a swastika painted because especially Germany but many other countries do not allow swastikas. And I think this might be the same idea. They don't want a picture of Hitler so it's more of a if you know what you're looking at, you know what you're looking at. But if you don't, you couldn't tell it's Hitler. So a little disappointed with that. Also, these decals, I don't know if I can get a good shot at how they're very glossy. You see that? Super, super glossy decals. I don't really recall seeing decals that glossy ever before. I'm hoping that they go down okay with a bit of flat coat. They'll look decent. Um, it's just interesting that they are so unbelievably glossy. So, I mean, time will tell how they work, but... Very happy with that kit. So that is the Hurricane Mark I product review. As I said, this is the first in this product review series. I do have a large number of kits in the stash and I will be pulling them out and going through more of these, showing you some of the cooler ones I have and going into significant detail as I am. So Hurricane Mark I, thanks for watching. 
thank you for watching guys and as always if you are interested in any of the content you see you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site and if you're interested in any of this content uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much and see you guys next time.